it's hot in the shade at 10 a.m. I don't even think it's 10 a.m. yet. And I'm preparing for our upcoming chicken math. We've got a bunch of American breast babies for the flock expansion that we have in our inside brooder box. And their personalities really changed in the last day. Like they are flopping around. They want to jump all over my hands when I put it in there. They just want to climb. They're getting loud and it's only week two. It's hot enough out here for them to be out here without a heat lamp. Our brooder box, we haven't really used this season at all. I don't really like to have them out here when it's super, super hot, especially this year when it's been as hot as it's been. But we have a mess. There's dirt daubers that have made homes inside of it. It's just cobwebs and stuff like that that I'm knocking off. So I want to clean it up, just look it over, see if there's any little repairs I need to do or touch up before I put down some of the Saturday lime down in the bottom and put down their shavings and get everything set up for them to be out here. I'm excited for them. And then I want to say in two or three weeks, we're going to have some more babies hatching out. So I really need the room and the space that they're in inside the house for those babies. Uh, and then around the first week of September, we have some of our meat birds, Cornish Cross, coming in. And I ordered a bunch of new birds. I ordered some for Kevin, some light Brahmas. And I ordered some Easter Eggers to expand our egg laying flock, especially since we ran out of eggs for our customers for the first time ever. And that is something that we learned this year. We were lucky that we never had to waste any eggs. We always had eggs for us. We had eggs for friends and family. And when we started to have too many, we put a sign up and that's how we got to meet our customers and they just started showing up and giving them my number and just establishing relationships i don't have a sign out now because i just don't have enough eggs and i feel bad turning people away and i didn't want to falsely advertise our sign so i just finished applying the first saturday lime i like to do it in almost kind of like a paintbrush method where I'll just sprinkle it all over the ground and side of the box and I'll take a broom and just sweep it and just kind of like coat all of the flooring and up on the sides with it. That way it just helps to sanitize it and try to keep some pests away before I put down all of the bedding. I just realized that I do have one area that I need to repair on this brooder. There's a spot where I can see outside of the edge and I think if I just put some screws in there, it'll tighten it up and that way we won't see the gap. It's just right in the middle where you can see a little sag and I just want to close any gaps. I need to adjust the lamp for them because that number two is the brooder box where they're in in our office right now. Number three is out there in the brooder box, the big one I'm getting ready. I've been watching that temperature just to check it to make sure it's safe for them. And that's where it's at at 10 o'clock this morning. So I think they're going to be a lot happier. I just need to raise their lamp. Yeah, that's where I have their lamp right now. And I've done it to where I can just adjust it and pull it up very easily like that. So already that's a quick adjustment. Yeah, just an hour later, number two is the adjustment I made. And then number three is where we're at at noontime in the outside brooder without a heat lamp. This right here is the remote gauge that I have out here. And I have it a little bit more towards the top because heat rises. And I put a regular bulb in there that shouldn't add heat but um this is the temperature at least i'm kind of watching it today just to be careful so a few things that i've learned with curious little baby birds is they're always trying to climb on everything and make a mess of everything 
I've tried a few different tricks with water. I have tried a few different tricks with feed. We even for a little while put in a little mesh square that allowed the shavings to fall through, but they just still found a way to kind of like flip it up on there and make a mess. So with the birds, my preference is to hang everything. I really like to use these adjustable carabiners. I don't know if that's what they're called, but I know I finally learned the word carabiner. So, uh, but this is adjustable. I really like these. I just put a long rope on there and I do that because they're so little and like every few days I find myself needing to adjust it for their height and I put it just high enough for them to like at least be able to dip their beaks in and it does help with the mess. They do like to jump up on it. They will climb around. They will try to poop on the edges. There's just no way to have things not have a mess all the time but this has minimized it. I try to just get it as level as possible and then I just keep an eye on it and adjust it as needed. Now, it's trickier with the food. With the food, there's a little convenient area to drop food in, but they always, every single time, I always have a chick that finds a way to jump up on the top and fall inside of it. So I just got this this mesh metal scrap from one of our projects with one of our Siskovich tractors and I just folded it and have like a little block so even if it does jump up there it can't get inside when I put food there it just falls right through and I can actually slide this off to the side and get food in there as I need to refill it so this is another thing with the carabiner and adjusting it I like that I can just adjust this up and down. And again, they're gonna climb up on it. They're gonna get on the sides. They don't know how not to climb on everything. That's just their nature. Hey guys, are you ready for moving day? I'm gonna turn this lamp off. We gotta take your food. See, they like to get chips all inside of their water. They're just messy. They don't know how not to be. Can you see how they like to climb on top of their feeder and poop on it? Of course, they're gross. Come on, babies. It's just something they like to perch on, which makes it kind of not my favorite, so I like when I get them outside with the other one. Now, this was kind of an accident. This paper towel roll they really like to play with that so I'm gonna leave it with them to play with they like to roost on it and we probably only needed this in there for the first week it's been really cute seeing them curl up to their fake mama feather duster are you guys ready for your move I got this tote with wheels to make it easier on myself moving them around oh this is exciting huh this is their first time outdoors it's always fun to watch their first reactions You're not sure about it? You're not sure yet? It's acting afraid to let go of my hand. Okay, you wanna do this with a friend? about 
I probably should introduce them to their water so they know what everything is. It looks like I need to lower their feed and their water a little bit. I mentioned earlier that these are our American breast chicks that we had incubated for our own flock expansion. This is part of our plans to expand our flock. We love this bird. It's gonna be our primary bird. It's a bird that we are selling uh, very small amounts. We're definitely not any type of large breeder or anything like that. In that being the case, we do have to make tough decisions. In this batch, we had two birds that had a slight crossing of their beaks. We are having to make tough decisions to decide who is going to be a meat bird, who is going to be part of the flock. Because we are looking at this seriously as breeders, all the ones with flaws, cross beaks, any markings in their feathers are going to be meat birds. Because of that, sometimes little things don't show up immediately, so we are going to be feeding them a high protein crumble. I'm not going to share the brand that we use just because not everybody has the same access. There was one particular feed I wanted because of somebody else talking about it and I, we can't find it in our area. So just a high protein all flock for the first, I think we're going to do that first four months. So that right at that mark, the ones that are going to go off as meat birds, we're going to continue on feeding them in a particular type of way. And at that point, we'll be able to see who is at a good size as a good keeper for a breeder. And then we'll start them on the fermented feed at that time. That's going to be our plan. I know that's tough for a lot of people to think about, but we don't just have birds that are pets. We have birds that we sell. Uh, we have birds that are meat birds and a lot of our birds are just layers. Now this brooder box is one in which that we built based on Joel Salatin style and if you want to see a video on how we built this I'll put that off to the side and down in the show notes below.